Oh, sure. Kind, gracious Father, we come thanking you for yet another day that you allowed us to wake up and get up, get ready and get ready to come, to get on this line, to be ready to hear a word of whatever is going to happen today. We just bless your name, Lord. We give you all the praise, the glory and the honor, asking you to touch all the sick and the shut-ins all over the world. Oh, bless the bereaved families right now, Lord. Ask you to bless the UAW, all, all of the people that's in charge of us, Lord, make, a, make them be better, Lord. Bless our presidents, our vice presidents, and all our coordinators and everyone that's making this happen for us. We ask you in the name of Jesus, bless everything that happens on this line today. Continue blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And with that, we ask for a volunteer to read Article 41. I'll read it, Connie. Okay. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made, giving us the guidance to do his work as Joshua's, working continually to support people in time of need, stand together in solidarity as UAW chaplains founded in our Constitution, Article 41. Amen. Amen. And thank you for that. And with that, we'll introduce our International Executive Board, starting with Bill Eady. Okay, we're not hearing from Bill Eady right now. We'll move on to Jerry Carson. Thank you, Connie. I want to bring you greetings from President Ray Curry and Vice President Director Chuck Browning and the entire International Executive Board. We want to thank you, chaplains, for all you do in your place of work, in our union, in the community, and with and for your families, being a salt and a light, meeting people where they are, sharing the good news of the true and living God. Love you, chaplains. We can never say thank you enough. Um, First, I want to start off with, I know Monday, this Monday on February 6th, we're going to have our our first Monday of the month, and we'll be holding Joshua Day from 7 to 8 p.m., so I know that Monday is going to be a powerful one, too, and I, uh, I know that Emma has something to share with you also once I get done uh, a praise report. Um, just asking the chaplains to continue to do what you're doing, being out there, meeting people where they are, attending union meetings, supporting the membership, and and lifting up the leadership. We, we're going to continue to do that, stand in the gap. Encourage all of those active and retired workers to, to vote. They all should have their ballots. And like we've been saying, if you don't have your ballot, make sure you get in touch with your local union hall and make sure that your contact information is up to date with your local union hall so that you can get a ballot. And if that is up to date, then you need to, to uh, go to uawvote.com and request a ballot. Um, one thing that I know, I always, I believe all of us, the way God created us, because we have that personal, intimate relationship with God, no matter what storms are coming or what fiery darts, we're always going to be optimistic and press forward and look, look for the good, because God's word tells us that all things work for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his will. And we know his word is true. Um, one last thing, and I'm I, we're getting ready for our next week. We're going to, our, our international chapsy officers and, and board members and all the regional coordinators, assistant coordinators and liaisons uh, will be attending our two-day planning meeting. We're going to finalize the agenda for our 36th annual chapsy conference, and we'll be meeting uh, on on uh, Thursday, February 9th, and Friday, February 10th, which just happens to be Emma's birthday on February 10th. Um, 
I am going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, just want to let you chaplains know, God's work always says, faith without works is dead. That's what Jesus told us, and we got to have love. I'm going to, out of love and be in the hands and the feet, I'm going to jump on 94, and I'm going to shoot down to Chicago. I'm going to be over at the Chicago Ford Chicago Assembly Plant and then the stamping plant for a time tomorrow. And then once I get done, I'm jumping back on the road, and I'm heading back to Detroit. So... Any of the chaplains in the area, I know uh, Marcia, any of you that happen to be in that area, if you'd like to join me, you got my cell phone number, you can call me, um, and then I'll let you know exactly what times I will be there. But uh, I'm excited about heading over there and having fellowship with the membership and encouraging them. I'm going to be encouraging them. That's what we do. Okay, I'm done. Um, Emma, do you want to share that praise report, please, and then we'll turn it back over to to Connie and our and our chapsy chair, Elder Herb Taylor. Well, thank you all for giving me a minute to speak, and I hope you all are having a blessed Friday. Uh, thank you always for what you do, and especially for your prayers. Uh, my dad is home from the hospital, and um, for the first time since before Thanksgiving, he can walk again by himself. And yesterday, he walked a mile. Which, and then he ran to the EMTs that brought him in, and they're like, we thought you'd be dead. So, uh, really, the power of prayer, even though I know how powerful it is, is really just so astounding. Sometimes it punches you in the gut a little bit, just to remind you that Christ, all, anything's possible. So, just thank you all, because I, just thank you. Okay. Uh um, uh, Connie, um, uh, say a special prayer for em Emma for that victory. Um, we believe God, and I know Emma do, and, um, she just dove right in and became a part of the family. And, um, uh, Connie, could you do us that honor? That honor? Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you, lifting up our sister Emma to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for her, Lord God. We thank you that you have sent her to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you use her in a mighty way, Lord, that your hand of anointing and guidance and wisdom be upon her, Lord God, that you just fill her full of you. We thank you, Lord God, her steps are ordered of you, that you would bless her whichever way she turns, Lord God, giving you glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We love Amen. you. Uh, Ken Thomas. Uh, you know, uh, where you are from, they are known by the winds, uh, the windy city and all of that. Jerry Carson think he can blow into your city without you being there for him or knowing about it. Uh, where you can send a prayer, you don't have to be there, but you can pray for Jerry. And uh, I keep telling y'all, Jerry Carson believes in his heart that he is a gangster. And he's getting ready to go into the city of gangsters. The El Capone, the John Paul Giddy, uh, Ken Thomas, help me out. Talk to Jerry Carson. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Father, we just want to uh, praise you and give Jerry safe travels to and from, and especially when he's in Chicago. Just uh, watch over him. May his words of wisdom be encouraging to our membership. May he uplift our members. And we just trust in you. It's going to be a beautiful day. Give him the strength and endurance throughout the day. Amen and amen. And, uh, I'll, I'll be, I got your back, Jerry. That's why it's so screwed up, and I'll be there for you. Hey, Brother Ken, you know, Viola 
it, I'm just going to share this with the chaplains every year. She goes on a trip with, with her girlfriends and I always encourage that, right? Because our spouses and, and, and our loved ones allow us to do what we do for God in the UAW. So anyway, she's going and she says, you got any plans for the weekend? I said, yeah, I'm going to run out to a couple plants, but she never asked me what city. <laughs> so she don't know I'm going to Chicago. She would be you know, worried, but it's well, gonna, you know, she about will the, now. Don't worry not about rest. <laughs> she will now. I got you. She's always yeah. wanting me to get more rest. <laughs> yeah, Carson going to be all right because we got him and uh, we're sending the words now. Uh, Ashley Lewis. Ashley Lewis. I. Are you on the call today? I am. See, you know, you know what I like. Did y'all hear what she just said? Did did y'all feel that? Hey man, look she at said, here. I am. I am, man. The church is getting so far away from. I am. Uh. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear the I am, I do not care who says it. I know who it is. I am. Uh, good morning, Ashley. Good afternoon. Could you, uh, would you like to say words today to the chaplains? Good morning. Um, yes. Uh... You know, one thing, and I, I'll just speak from the heart. One thing that's been happening as a result of this election is a severe uh, amount of division and a lot of really um, fear, fear that comes out as um, attacks, right? And we have to remember, because when we get frustrated, when we see these things happening, it really is heartbreaking and gut-wrenching. And yesterday I found myself really angry and upset because they used to actually spy. Corporations would spy to be able to read the lips of union members because they wanted to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And now on social media, you see all of this discussion and all this infighting when what I know to be true is, is that there are a lot of great men and women at the local, regional, and international levels who are doing the work, who are saving lives daily, whether it be saving a member from addiction, saving a member from depression, uh, really just helping them realize dignity in their workplaces. And we have to be careful because the spirit of division is a spirit. It's a spirit that we have to fight against. And we have to remind ourselves we're not wrestling against each other. It's not flesh and blood. It is that spirit. And so yesterday I found myself really frustrated and began to channel it into prayer because the reality of it is, is when we are unfamiliar with what is to come, then we can behave in ways that are ungodly. Come on. And I'm really praying hard that God will heal this institution because no matter what people say, the people that are working within the UAW, whether they believe in God or a higher power or whatever God they call, they are answering a call for working people. The UAW not only helps our members, but so many different communities and working people in general. And it's not a surprise that this spirit is trying to attack this institution. But I'm really asking this group, um, to continue to pr pray for unity, to pray for healing, and to also pray that we build relationship with our members because we are not each other's enemies. <laughs> the, we are not in an espionage mission, right? Like, and I'm tired of, I'm on the inside. We're, we are one UAW working as a wheel towards the greater good of working people. And I pray that we never lose sight of that, no matter what's happening, because this election is just nothing but a, a device of the enemy. And we have to be mindful and place it where it is, because as these elections are occurring, 
we still have to remind ourselves to be of God, to move like Jesus' feet on the ground. And even though people may say things that hurt and bother us and hurt this institution, it is our love that I believe would shift this institution and really bring it back towards healing. So thank you, Elder Walker, because, I mean, I'm sorry, Elder Taylor, because I am bothered immensely, but it's always a reminder that the bigger the issue, the greater our God. It's not our battle. It's not our battle. That's right. Um, you brought in today a divine elect. You spoke about division, fear, frustration. And you spoke from the heart. It's not a lot of us today speaking from the heart. We're speaking from the mind. We're speaking from what we know. And I heard everything you said. You talked about things that are not familiar to us. Slash, you really was talking about faith, which is the substance of things hoped for. And that's what you're hoping for. The evidence of things not seen. You haven't seen it, but you believe it. That's what faith is. And yeah, um, we back to the days where we we really don't have to worry about it. And this is the shame part of it. To worry about the corporation at this moment in our history. We have to worry about ourselves. That's why Jesus he spoke in Philippians and he was saying to the people if there be any consolation in Christ if any comfort of the spirit if any fellowship of the spirit if any comfort of love he pleaded that we be like and having the same love, being on one accord. That's what solidarity means. One, we can argue without being disagreeable only if love is in the house. But anything we do, especially, I'm talking to the household of faith because what Ashley just spoke was a self-check to us. To us. And we don't like for people to talk to us because we got this monopoly syndrome. We think we got a get out of jail free card that we can use anytime we get into tough spots. But it's not like that. And it's so refreshing that God prepared a ram in the bush and Emma, who we didn't know six months ago, and Ashley, who we didn't know three, four months ago. See, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We got you, Ashley. We got you, Emma. Emma. And we got one another. But we have to be careful. 
because inside the UAW right now, there is a way that seemeth right unto the man, to a man, but the end thereof is it, it, bad. So um, we got some issues that we're going to pray for right now. And before I ask Pastor Walker, see, uh, Ashley, so you know everything we need is in the house. Um, I was in a grocery store, and the Lord told me, call Aline Walker. Call her. Tell Helene Walker I have an assignment for her. I'm in, I'm in the grocery store trying to get some bologna and some ham and, and, and some salad dressing to fix me a sandwich. <laughs> and the Lord is interrupting this, this shopping trip for me to call Helene Walker. And I did, not knowing what I was going to say to Pastor Walker, but we asked Pastor Walker to be a chaplain for the chaplain. Who do we call? See, right now the UAW. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm rough on anybody, fellas, but right now the UAW, we in a mess. We are, and. Um, there's something that says a house divided against itself will not stand. Now hold on. We can rationalize everything we want to do, but that's a word that we need to really take a look at and grab hold and say, what am I doing to bring division? What am I doing? I got to choose, and we missing it. He didn't say, choose you this day whom you're going to serve in reference to this structure that we are in. He meant it for him. Now, wait a minute, y'all. Choosing is not an option for God word to be twisted. We got to stay the course because we have to believe, Pastor Walker, that the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the righteous avail it much. That's why we're pausing right now. Pastor Walker will lead us in prayer. Hey, in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, God is moving inside of me right now. This stuff is coming and is flowing. He says to the Ephesians, I beseech you. And we can stop at beseech. He was begging them people. He was bad. Man, y'all get y'all act together. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you walk worthy into the vocation where with you are called with all lowliness, with meekness, with long suffering. And long suffering only meant, y'all, especially us, the chaplain, we have to be able to put up with other people's mess in love, regardless to what they're doing. We have to display the type of godly love, and I'm going to piggyback on the Super Bowl right now. They got this team up in the Super Bowl, uh, got a saying, Philadelphia, the city of 
brotherly love. We are a union that should be exhibiting right now brotherly love. Pastor Walker, help us out. Pray for us, please. Amen. I just want to say just a few words. Um, when I got there, it was not planned for the chaplains to be there as a corporate group or to do or say anything. But when I looked around the room and I saw chaplains on the post, I even saw the bishop. He could barely walk, y'all, but he made his way up to the podium to say I'm here. And God, his sister, I mean, his wife, sister Frankie, was just standing there, and that made my heart good. And then God showed me that you don't have to have the mic. Just make your presence known. And that would change the atmosphere. But I went up to uh, Tony, who is one of the lead. He's the first vice president, one of the lead ones there. He's on the bargaining team. And I, went, I said, Tony, the chaplains are here. And we got your back. Whatever y'all need, we are already here to serve. He's just so happy to see me. He stopped with all those hands shaking. And he looked at me. He said, I got something prepared for you guys. Stay tuned and let Michelle know. I said, yes, sir. Smile and walk away. I just want him to know that we here. We didn't have to pray from the mic. We are all praying. Not only the chaplains in the room, you guys are praying too. See, there's one thing about God. <laughs> he don't need no tool to get a prayer through. All you got to do is call on his great name. Father God, we, we, we believe you. I don't know if we really understand what that means to say, I believe God. You believe God even when it don't look good, it don't feel good, it don't feel right, and all hell is breaking loose around us, but we still believe you. So, Father God, we're going to continue to believe you because you don't need us to work things out. It's probably all, it's, I'm sure it's already worked out. We just have to watch it being played out. Sometimes you got to bring trouble and bring people to their knees so they don't realize that we need God. Yes. We believe you, God. And we trust you. You ain't going to leave. We know that you're not going to just leave us out here hanging like this. It called everything that's going to be done is for your glory. It's for your glory and it's going to have to happen because it was prophesied. The prophet said so, so it shall be. So we just going to sit back and say, I told you. I told you that God was going to come through. So that's why we are here. We are the chaplains are hanging at their posts on our knees. We fight on our knees. We don't have to fight in public. We fight on our knees and God hears us in our prayer closets. So Father God, we're going to thank you right now and rejoice for what you want to do, what you're going to do. Father God, we understand that you to be a God that will make a way out of no way. To some folks, they're saying, I don't know how this is going to be done, that it's a great big mess. But we know, God, that you specialize in getting a mess together. The world was in a mess and, and you came down yourself. That's what we some of us believe. I believe you came down, wrapped yourself in flesh and you handled it at a bloody cross. So, Father God, we know that this is no problem for you. We thank you. We ask you to stand behind our leadership and give them strength when it looks like there's no hope. We yeah. thank you. We ask you, oh, Father God, to be with Jerry. We can't always be with Jerry. He's going here and there, but we know that you are with him because the Bible says you live inside of him. So we thank you, God, yes. that you are always with him. He can't get away from you. You are right there leading him, guiding him, protecting him, and Bill, and our president, and the vice president, yes. and Elder Herb, and you can protect all of these people, all of these leaders at the same time, no matter where they are. You are an awesome, mighty God. You got this, and we know you got it. So we just going to say thank you. 
thank you. Thank you, God, because we, we, the UAW chaplains, believe God. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Elder, for the few minutes. Amen. Amen. Amen, my sister. Thank you, uh, Sister Walker. Let me show you how petty we can get off track, of course. Um, the man that just popped into my screen, Brother Bill Eden. Bill, while we here, been... yes, sir, hold on. Before you come, I'm, 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 I'm going to set you up. I want to bring you in because I got a call and a text from several of our members at Local 862 about another life that was lost because of suicide. And I got to, I got to pause because God has put you, Bill, uh, I can't speak on it like Bill can speak on it. But I can feel about it like all of y'all do. Man, there's something wrong with the world uh, when, uh, help me out, B Bill Eady, Bill Eady. <laughs> All right, before I get a little bit, the first and foremost thing, I want to bring you greetings from President Curry, Vice President Browning, and the entire International Executive Board. I want to thank these powerful chaplains these ladies who have come home today and have dropped dimes on us Hilda. i mean everything yes. from the test from emma the Ash ashley's declaration on what's going on in the division in the house mm -hmm. sister helena that powerful prayer that you just gave us i just want to say that you know I also had that anxiety a little while ago, that very same anxiety, Ashley. And I just want to tell you that the Lord just happened to drop in my spirit that everything is going to be all right. Yes. And I believe God. Mm. And so it, it 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 brought a a peace to me. It 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 brought a it brought a piece to me to where I don't I don't worry about it like I used to worry about it now I'm actively doing my part to help but at the end of the day I don't worry about it I was active I was truly discouraged and worried in the past about what's going on in our union but now you know I, I have a piece and I'm just saying sometimes we just got to turn it over to God Yes, sir. That is that's that's what we gotta do. We gotta we, we gotta you know stop taking on things that we can't have no control of, and let God let loose and let God, as they say, let loose and let God. But I also want to speak on uh, what Elder talked about. Uh, I don't know if it was a young man or a young woman. It doesn't matter. Yes. The of one's life, you know. One of the things that we do, we have to do as chaplains, is, 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 is be eyes and ears out there on the, the plant floors or the offices, no matter where you work. It is people out here that are struggling. And belonging to this great institution that we belong to, we have benefits that can help people. But a lot of times, our co-workers don't know all the benefits that they have yes. they don't know the that they can go to they don't know that there is somebody that is there to talk to there 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 are resources out there in the community that can be tapped into whether you be homeless whether you whether you're having financial problems whether you're having addictions there's there's resources out there for you to help you through and get you through. 
Now we just happen to be people of faith. So we know we know the ultimate resource we can go to, but not everybody knows that ultimate resource. But there are resources that are available to everybody. Uh, but you know, and all we can do is we got to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters that we work with, that the Lord will give them a peace of mind and lead and guide them to the resources that are available to them, which are people. People are a great resource for everybody. And we just have to hope, hope that if they reach out to somebody, that somebody happens to know who they can get a hold of. That's why yeah. I ask the chaplains, let's just make sure that at this point in time that we are very visible. Because there is a, when there's division in the house, people need to know that when they have anxiety, they can go to somebody. And if you can't go to nobody else, and just you can go to the chaplains. And the chaplains can, if they don't do nothing else, just sit there and listen to what you got to say. That's what we do. But we also know that if, if there's other resources that are needed, we know to get them to the right people. For we know we're not counselors. We haven't been instructed on what, what to do there. We can pray for anybody. But if somebody needs something, we can get them to the EAP services that they 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 necessarily need, and they can they can access the, those services through their benefits or through particular programs that they have at the job. I just want to say that chaplains continue to stand in the gap like you have, continue to be there for each other, continue to know that we are there for each other, and that if you need something. There's a chaplain for a chaplain. All right. God bless everybody. And I'm going to turn it back over to Elder. Oh. Uh, well time. Very appropriate. And y'all know the reason why. Can't nobody. Do us like Jesus. How he arranged things. It's easy to him. Y'all know why it's easy for him? Because he's the only being that ever was and is and still to come perfect. All of us have flaws. So when we hear about things like that, we hear about it all the time. And uh, hey, uh, don't get mad at Elder Taylor because this is what the Bible says. Sometimes you can walk up to the person and you can speak with a thousand tongues. But if you have not love, I don't say it. This is what I read out of the scripture. You are a tinkling symbol, just making noise. And our membership deserve better. Sometimes, our, no, not sometimes, sometimes, all the times, our members need to hear the chaplain say, come on, let me walk you down here to the EAP. Instead of, I'm going to invite you to my church. I'll get some texts, Sister Ashley. I'll get some calls. And uh, it's okay. Because I got two friends, Bill Eady and Jerry Carson, that understand what we say. And uh, come on, Jerry, get that out of you. You are so full today. Help us out, Brother Carson. Oh, thank you, Elder. It's just... God has strategically placed each one of you where you are for his purpose. And his purpose is to save us, to encourage us, to let us know that we are loved beyond measure. And we, Jesus told us, we got to even love those that hate us. 
And I was just this morning, you know, I I, I was passing uh, uh, newly elected vice president uh, and, and President Curry assigned him to Stellantis, uh, Rick, Rich Boyer. And he told me how he reads scripture every morning. I mean, we talked about God and then I was in his office with him, just having some fellowship with him. And uh, what an amazing person. I mean, God, and that's what each one of you are. We ain't, ain't God don't, God created every one of us. And if we stay about his business and we can have disagreements without treating each other bad, it's, God set this up right now. We talk about all the time, and I'm talking about Elder Bill and I will have conversation. God just blows us away every day, just like what he's doing right now. He brought us, he brought us each one of you. And I could call on each one of you, and you're going to sing his praises. And, and each one of you are, are miracles. Walk and breathe and have powerful testimonies. God has brought each one of you through so much. And he brought, and while we have breath in us, I don't care. I think everyone that's on this WebEx, you got breath in you. You're going to be praising God no matter where we're at. In, in at the beginning of a storm, at the end of a storm, we're going to praise him. We're going to praise him on the mountain. We're going to praise him in the valley. But guess what? To God be the glory in our union, God put our union together. Is the God is too precious. Our membership and our union is too precious. And we just got to be good stewards of wherever God has placed us and where he is. He says too much is given, much is required. And I just want, want to tell each one of you, you are precious, and, and God, he knew us before we were in our mother's womb, right? Yeah. He knows the hairs on our head. He says, he says, I read scripture where he wants to sit down and reason with us. The one that created the heavens and the earth and everything that's in them, Elder Philip Jackson, and I was just telling, he says, Jerry, that means we knew him before we were in our mother's womb. If he knew us, and, and you know, and, and before I really, can, I can tell you this, with my walk, he, he would call in every one of us from the time that we came out of our mother's womb. Jesus said the children know them. God has been pouring into each one of us. The UAW has been pouring into each one of us. I remember as a little boy standing with my mom in the unemployment of what God did with the UAW so that people can have dignity, so that people can live and, and raise their families, you know, it, give them an opportunity to do better than them, right? That's all. And I don't care where you go, but this is, God's work in our union. I'm going to stop, but I'm going to just say to you, to each one of you, I, God is so great and so awesome, and it don't matter what we're going through. It's going to make us better servants of his, and, and it is so important to just give him the glory and to reach out to the resources. Like Bill said, we've got, because of God in our union and allowing us to negotiate and get out of the companies. And that don't make companies bad, good, or indifferent, but their machines compete with other machines. But we're about the people. And we're going to call them to task like we've done for 87, going on 88 years. I cannot say enough. And I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you. I respect the membership immensely and whenever they make their decisions. But I can tell you that President Ray Curry is a man of integrity. He is a godly man. He loves the membership. It's, it's in, it, just like you said, Elder, about Ashley. It's in his heart. God is in us. And we are to be loving on one another. We can have disagreement. And you know what? There's different ways to get there. 
But one thing is so important that we get there together in solidarity. And that's what President Curry said. He wants to bring our solidarity to get, uh, together. That's a leader. That's someone that loves and cares about. I'm done. I'm going to love you chaplains. And just please continue to reach out to everyone you can and encourage them. And, and, and I know you're speaking life into people. I'm looking at you as and. You are beautiful. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Elder. Love you, chaplains. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. We, you are the part. We are the clay. Mold us and make us in your own way. Have thine own way. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I only ask of this chaplaincy network, please let God be God. And I am so glad none of us, none of us is God. Because if we were, we would have kicked some people to the curve a long time ago. We would have threw family members away a long time ago. It is uh, a challenge. It is a challenge. But I'm looking at the screen. We got over 40 people on a Friday again. And I would be amiss if I didn't speak on it now because I know a lot of you are, have, asked, have asked. The chaplains are coming to town. When we come to town, Bill, we always uh, try to, uh, weather permitting, we always try to invite the city of Detroit chaplains to a gathering. But just like we asked you guys, uh, uh, to uh, support us with our decision with the board and the members, we are asking you this time to let us have the Thursday night for, we got to get some training in. And uh, what I saw every time we come, you guys love us, so y'all come and grow. And see, my heart was torn the last time, Bill, when I had finished my meal, and we still had guests ordering. And uh, we're not going to do that to the people of Detroit, the chaplains of Detroit this year. Um, we're not going to reveal where we're going to be, because if we did, Y'all uh, will manage to get to us. We know that. So Amen. we're just gonna we're just gonna let you know we're not gonna do nothing, but we still need your prayers. Cause as we fellowship with the coordinators and the assistant coordinators and a few others, we asking that uh, we got to learn to know them that labor amongst us because we're not speaking the same language, the coordinators. And the coordinators is distance from the assistant coordinators. The devil is alive. Ashley brought it to us. 
there'll be, there'll be no division among us just because your region is designated a number or a letter inside the UAW, we are all the same. Is nobody greater than nobody else up in here? My region is not greater than your region. That's the training we got to get out. And uh, I know y'all will give us a pass on this one. And if you want to share a meal with us, meet us up at Black Lake in June. Bill will be there. Jerry will be there. We got a special night plan. Uh, going to try to maneuver for Emma to be there and Ashley to be there and uh, Cynthia to be there. Jerry Carson got that assignment along with Bill Eady. But here next week, uh, we we doing this, Ashley. We rolling up our sleeves because we're going to get on one accord. And that's going to be around the time where uh, some of the election results will be coming in. So uh, any way he blesses us, we'll be satisfied. But have I got a preference? Yes. I don't think the, the, the person that uh, I have a right for a vote and I don't think anybody's going to hold me responsible for my choice. We're going to be all right. We are going to be all right. We are praying for that victim. It was a young man, Bill. He was 33 years old. We are praying for his family. We are also still praying for the family at the 31 victim, local 31. We are praying that God just allow us to not try to figure out the why, but to support the after effect. We can't do nothing about it when it has happened but we can reach out and do what we do. Pray without ceasing. Somebody said it again. I think it was um, Dr. Jackson was saying the other day in the conversation, we're not a standing committee in the Constitution, but we're the only committee still standing on our knees. Only God can have you stand on your knees. Amen. Huh? So look at here. Let's make the uh, atmosphere. Let's rejoice and give God what he's deserved. Uh, we're going to do our hallelujah roll call. We do it every now and then when we run against these divine ladies delays. Um, everybody come off a mute. We're going to say the roll call. We're going to say your name, your local union, and um, we're going to do it all in one accord. And we're going to be like the day of Pentecost. Somebody might play this tape back and just pick it up when we're doing this hallelujah roll call. And there's them chaplains are gone out of their mind. No, we're not out of our mind. <laughs> we just doing what we do best. Give God his praise. Come on. On the count of three, everybody off mute. Announce yourself and uh, let's rejoice. One, two, three. Herb Taylor, you ain't Lewis Roberts, Local 12, St. Vincent Mercy Medical Center. Praise God. All right, all right. Check this out. News flash. I got a bulletin. I got somebody trying to sneak in here on us.
but his anointing is so strong, he don't understand. Uh, Del Rico Lord, are you with us today? Brother Del Rico Lord. Elder and all the chaplains, good afternoon, everybody. Talk to us, man. How you doing? Man, I'm so encouraged by everything that's been shared this afternoon that I've heard what a, a blessing and joy it is to have so many folks connected together in one spirit, and that's the spirit of the Lord. Obviously, uh, there's so much in the world and so much in our midst that will bring discouragement, frustration, doubt, uncertainty, um, irritation, and, and the like, but one thing I echo the sentiment of those who have spoken previously that we have to remember who's in control in every situation. And um, and we have to understand and, and remind ourselves, even in the midst of so much discouragement, that um, the Lord is in control and he knew we would be where we are before we even made it to this place, even before any of us signed up with the UAW. Uh, gain employment in our workplaces, our work sites, uh, had children, had families, and made mistakes or whatever our life stories are, only to find ourselves in the place that we're in today. He knew it all, and he uniquely and divinely equipped every person on this line, and even those that are connected in spirit who are not on the line. He equipped us through those life experiences, through those callings, through those failures, those disappointments and joys for this particular moment. And so I'd say to every person on the line that you embody everything that you need inside of you, even within your spirit, even in your worst state and point, you embody everything that you need to do what you've been called to do. You all are encouragers. You are all uplifters. You all are all uh, carriers of the light of of our Lord. And um, and I just want to encourage you today on the spot to walk in the confidence of who you've been called to be. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. You're going to be discouraged. Walk in the confidence of who you've been created to be. You know, uncertainty. So many people knocking on your door, sometimes looking to pull something from you that you feel you don't even possess because you poured it all out. Continue to walk in the confidence of who God's created you to be because my grandmother said it, and I know it's true. He'll never leave you, and he'll yeah. never forsake you. The word of the Lord declares that he'll be with all of us, even into the end of this. And so um, just be encouraged. It's great to see everybody. And uh, just know that your light is shining bright. You know, uh, something that's so unique while folks are sitting in their offices or walking the work sites across this country and even in Puerto Rico, people that are connected with the UAW. And um, there may be somebody who does not know why they're able to be strong today or have their head up or to do what they do, have no idea. They may think they're just running on idle pilot, but the devil is a liar. Yeah. I believe they're functioning today, not knowing that all of us are on this line and they're functioning today because it's your prayers that are keeping them going strong. So y'all got to keep doing what you do. Why? Because you have everybody else in the organization and our members on the floor depending on this. So I hope I haven't said too much. God bless and uh, keep walking in who you are. Hey, thank you, Brother Delco. Hey, quickly, um, we want to uplift, uplift uh, Sister Cynthia. Come on off mute, Cynthia. Cynthia's uh, mother is, um, as well as others, but Cynthia, you have uh, you have the floor. Go ahead on. Thank you, Brother Herb. Uh, just in recognition, uh, chaplains, thank you so much for your prayers, and thank you, Pastor Helen Walker, for always uplifting me. But in honor of today, uh, February the third, twenty twenty-three, wear red and or and uh, support of heart disease. My mother will be 88 years old this year, the same as the UAW, and she suffers with congestive heart failure, as well as two of my brothers and uh, my oldest sister. And I would just like to say that I'm so grateful to be on this call today. I thank each and every one of you, you know, and I want to say one thing, uh, the retirees, 
you are the backbone of this. Uh, Sister Ashley and I, I sit at the table with a retiree on Wednesday at Local 600. And let me just say, I've never been there. I know the history of it. But shout out to Brother Walter Phelps. This man is 75 years old. He retired in 1992 before I even knew anything about the UAW. And he was telling me, Miss Harris, I retired when I was in my 40s. And he's still active. And I thank God for the retirees because because of men like him and women, we are who we are. So the Phelps family, uh, he was amazed that I didn't know any Phelps and I had to tell him I'm not from here. But I thank God for what this UAW does for not just UAW members. I'm a first generation, didn't know anything about the UAW. But just keep lifting us up in prayer because this organization, what we're built on, nothing can tear us down. And so it's people like you, the chaplaincy, our yeah. leaders that are in place now, we're going to be all right because nothing takes our God by surprise. He knew this was going to happen before it happens. And let me just say the results are already in. He already knows. He just hasn't revealed it to us. So just be encouraged. I love you all. Be blessed. Know that God has us and ain't a devil in hell can do nothing to stop it. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, that is amazing. Uh, we praying for everybody. And uh, we just want you to know that we um, appreciate the chaplains calling in. Uh, if we never said it to you before, we do not take it for granted that you guys will spend an hour with us on a Friday and a Wednesday and a Monday. We love you for that. Um, that's amazing, Sister Sandra. So get our song in and everybody have a great weekend. Expect something marvelous Monday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Eastern. Come on, Sister Sandra. Amazing grace, how sweet is the sound that saved found was blind but now i i see Hallelujah. praise god praise god praise god praise god Praise God, 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 praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God bless everyone.